Welcome in, everybody. Welcome back to episode 31 of the Dragonlance campaign, The Favored Few. I am your humble host, Dungeon Master Extraordinaire uh, Jugan, and I am the owner of and founder of Goblet Some More Lots. Uh, I, if you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe, leave a comment down below what's your favorite part. Uh, we just started the Black Order. Um, I've decided to um to uh for every like the that video got for the very first episode of order to, or the black order uh so right now it's at eight lights last i checked so right now they'll be getting a d8 uh if they get d if they get 10 lights is d10 and so forth and then it goes all the way up to a, a natural 20 for 20 lights uh, we also two away from them get our first stretch goal, which would be 400, and they would get an advantage. So if you're not uh, f subscribed to our YouTube, please uh, go and subscribe. So exclamation point YouTube here in the chat for us live, and uh, gives you a link to our uh, YouTube. Uh, our next time we will be for that it will be Sunday at 10 p.m. So it be live stream to TikTok. So if you're not following my TikTok, go over to my TikTok and you can watch that live on TikTok. And then it'll be posted to YouTube on Monday the next day. So make sure you go check that out. Uh, we will not have a session for Order to Goblet next Monday as, you know, I thought I was done with do the duty with this command. And then, nope, they go rope me in for two more duties. So my next duty day is Monday. And so we have one more episode of Order to God before we go on the extended break. So there's that. But we're still here rocking right along with Dragonlance and our fellow streamers. So Nihilish, when you live again? I will likely be live tomorrow evening. I'm working on Hong Kong and I'm rolled up Pentaconi. Yeah, your audio is kind of going funky there, but yeah. All right, and uh, Cleanser Rain, when have you started streaming yet? No, but I have been crossing some goal markers off in other aspects of life. So as I've kind of said week over week, I, I do feel it getting a lot closer um, to coming back to it. But for now, we're still on hiatus and uh, just excited to be involved in, in this campaign. All right, and uh, Old Man Garrus. Hello there, I am Old Man Garrus. I stream here on Twitch and will be expanding onto YouTube. Uh, typically space type survival games, No Man's Sky, though I have dabbled in a couple of other uh, ARPGs, Path of Exile, Last Epoch, and Dungeons and Dragons world creation. Very nice. Uh, with that being said, as you can see, Barum's uh, border is now black. Barum did sadly pass away last episode. Um, so you will see a difference in the intro and outro. As well, if you look down, our rewards are now sound beats. So if you redeem a D6, a magic item, or a natural 20, or any of those sorts of things, get a nice little sound of me doing a quirky voice for you getting it back. You still have to put, it still requires you to put in a name or who you're giving it to, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah. Uh, I have Ziggy. I, I do. I always forget I, that had changed. Thank you for letting me know that. Uh, now we have everybody in the right camera frame. Thank you, uh, Carrie, for letting me know that you're on the wrong frame. Uh, with that being said, let's grab your goblet, sit back. And we're at and enjoy the show. Quiet melody that if I listen. 
and welcome back. Thank you, Summit Forgery, for the raid. If you're uh, new here, we're uh, Dungeon and Dragons, or stream, Goblets and War of War <laughs> Goblets and Warlots. I, man, words are hard. Uh, thank you, Silver, for the shout out to Summit. Uh, exclamation point rewards so let you know what you can do for the party. I uh, just did all the rewards and changed them into a sound bites and the uh, viewer rewards. So you can do those. Those are pretty cool now. So with that being said, I forgot who has recapped it. I uh, know Vera volunteered for it. Is everybody okay with that? Okay. Uh, Vera, you volunteer for recap. I forgot to write down the Atacon of Meta Initiative, so I'm probably doing that while you're doing your recap. So go ahead and lead us in tonight's episode. Last time on Dragonlands, one of our comrades fell. And if you have been following our crew, the favored few before now, getting fewer by the episode, uh, you will know that uh, we began this journey with a fallen comrade as well. It's been Greenshield. It's where the majority of us met was at uh, his funeral. At his wake, I sang a song for him. So it should not come as too much of a surprise that I would sing for Belrum. Now... Get rid of my nerves. Okay. Here we are once again to lay someone new to rest. If you told me this before, I would have thought it wasn't just. My feelings were strong, I meant true. Took them be pride to his doom. No feather fall for him to fly. But did you know forever's not goodbye? That's just one step in entering those golden halls away. We'll miss the way you smiled. Why can't you stay here for a while? Oh, tell me what you see in this dazzling, sparkling night. We're searching far and wide for the meaning of our lights. Stars are twinkling tonight. Baby, hold your breath, don't cry. That might be forever, but forever's not goodbye. Our healer fell once or twice, but what else can I say? She got back up again and again, she can do this all day. Little Carrie passed by her fallen, silver cut never forgotten. Our ranger's arrows back me up, not to mention that bullet pop. Who did I forget? I guess it's no one of import. Oh, that bard, don't you worry, I'll make him death pretty escort. Oh, tell me what you see in this lonely sparkling night. I'm searching far and wide for the meaning of my life. Stars are twinkling tonight, baby, hold your breath, don't cry. Death might be forever, but forever's not a goodbye. We will meet him again. Oh, yeah. Wow. I didn't want to start this episode in tears, but all right. But I guess we are. Um, but that... There was... A great battle. We ended where Cleansing Rain was. Everybody found Baron's body. Cleansing Rain started looting. And then Carry threw it. Or Cleansing Rain looted Baron's body. And then Carry snapped out of uh, her shock and threw a dagger at Cleansing Rain. Hitting Cleansing Rain in the back of the shoulder. And that's where we pick up. Uh, we'll start. Uh, Zig, we'll do the out combat initiative for a little bit. Unless y'all want to take over, just let me know. Ziggy, you're up first. 
Uh, I guess I'm going to use my action just to move down from the tower. Uh, I like I I think I'm far away from the scene, so I, it'll take me a while to uh, you know get down the ladder and come out the door to where I'm assuming we're kind of all going to where Bellroom's body is at this point, right? I'll, I'll say you and Vera were up there together. You're the last ones on top of the roof. You killed the last person. Y'all would come down. And Ashley, I mean, y'all all right there. We won't really go ahead and comment. Right. Initiative unless we need to. Hopefully we don't well, need I'll, to. I'll, I'll say, hey, Vera, thank you for the assist. Uh, that was a great kill on that guy. Let's, uh, let's go down and meet with the others. And then I'll start climbing down the ladder. Those were your arrows that were helping earlier, right? Yeah, shot from the tower. Yeah, good I shot. Mean, I, I, I do what I can to to try to help everybody. Yep, I'm gonna go down the tower too. All right, as y'all come down in the tower, what scene do they come up upon? Carrie, cleansing rain, and I think Mela was there too. I'm not sure where Mela went. No, I was she was still towards flying. the gate. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you were no, flying. I was flying by the she was pilot. flying. Yeah. Yeah. To give you uh, her little bit of HP, Ziggy. You were in her bubble. That's right. Okay. <clears throat> what you, what they come across is. <clears throat> ah, damn it, Carrie! I'm on the same team. What are you doing? Why are you touching his body like that? Why are you taking his stuff? I just. We don't want enemies to get a hold of it, you know? I'm sorry. What I just enemies? Have to look. We've already we killed know. everyone. We don't know. There's not more. Someone hiding in a tent. Can never be too careful. God. Okay, what's going on? All I see is the new guy with a knife in his back standing over. Is that. Is that a, a, a still. Bellroom? What, what, what did. Clint, what did. It, what did. What happened here? I didn't do nothing. She threw a knife at me. Because you would. Why do you have all of Bellroom's I just, you know, wanted to make sure it was kept safe. I'm, I can't bring him back or nothing, you know. Let them breathe if they needed to. I, I don't know. It just, it didn't seem to be doing any good just laying there on him. Uh, Clin uh, Cleansing, can you rename yourself in Zoom? correct name <laughs> uh dashing uh as you're standing up uh you have in your hand uh, the last pieces of uh loot uh bellroom would you like to describe what he has in his hands or the ghost of bellroom all right so in his hands there are a bundle of um papers and a binder that has a leather strap holding it all closed. And I, I actually gave um, Dastian the information so he can describe what he does and what he sees. Here, look, I, I'm not doing anything with it. I'm just gathering it up. God, I've got this notebook. Don't, didn't even know he could write. Uh, <clears throat> feels like there's some stuff in it, but I, I don't want to open it for fear of catching another dagger from you lot. Um, and, and it looks like half a dozen letters here. Oh, well, this one's this one's for Mela, uh, and here's one for Carrie, and and Ziggy and Vera. There's even one here for Lorwyn. I'm going to hit him. <laughs> Roll an unarmed strike. Hit. Nine. Nine misses. You're too fucking tall. I would imagine that the, the tears maybe in your eye kind of blind you in fearless rage. You just wildly come out, wildly try to swing Haymaker, and you just just miss as Dashin probably leans out of the way. 
Whoa, settle down there, Vera. Everyone, stay calm. I'm not the enemy here. I Where didn't were do you this. I found you like this. You saw me. I was right next to you and Mila. Running away. We were surrounded by foes, and you ran away. Your fellow kin were behind us, in need of help. What were your first words to them when you came up to them? Where's my flute? <laughs> well, you've, you've, you've just got things all mixed up here, you know? Like, I have an instrument. I don't... I'm not a fighter. I don't do that sort of thing. Why are you here? Well, I've already done told you this. Ishvern told me to find you lot because it might help me find my strumming. Why are you with us? Well, because you lot we seem like... We don't need uh... you. You clearly need us more than you. <sighs> You're right. I do need you. Hell, I'm practically worthless. My whole life, I've just had everything handed to me. My father, known through thousands of sea elves for his, his music. Do you know the pressure that comes with that? Everyone looks at you, his only son all the time, expecting you to be great, expecting all these things of you. I try to be great. I play instruments extremely well. A lot of them, mind you. I can play the drum, the harp, all these things. That doesn't just happen. I worked really hard for that stuff. But this whole battling and fighting, it's, it's new to me. I, I've never felt more worthless than I, than I do right now. I've seen you little folk giving your all, getting knocked down, standing back up for the fight. Me, well, I, I ran away. I'm not proud of it. I just, I don't know what else to do in that moment. I'm sorry. And the first thing to come to mind is to strip your fallen comrades of their goods. I suppose I may have done some insensitive things along the way. I, I assure you it wasn't to cause Ply to be distasteful to anyone. You could have waited until, you know... Everyone knew that he was gone. He's gone. Body's not even cold yet. Okay, uh, I, I, Ziggy's gonna walk over to uh, examine the body, kind of crouching. He's gonna position his body kind of in between, you know, so he's 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 gonna be in between um, Dash and, and and the fallen Belrum, kind of bend over and look at the corpse. I'm assuming it's cooling rapidly. Uh, as as it's dying, of course, his beard is magically shrinking into nothing, getting shorter and shorter until it disappears completely. Um, and I'm going to look around the body. Can I easily tell that there was that he died from a fall, or does it look like? I mean, does it look like this uh, one of our teammates might have come? You have to give me a mess and check. And as you're doing this, Mela flies around. And what'd you say, Mela? I said he's gone. Oh, um. did, we, did we lose someone? And I do a quick head count and I see that Bellroom's not standing with everybody. Nope. What'd you get, Ziggy? I got a 16. I'm crouched over his body, kind of examining his, his uh, what's going on. As you crouch over, it doesn't take very long to understand what exactly happened, because now you're remembering back. He jumped over the top of the tower, and you look, and you see a pile of blood 
by the head of Balram, and as you look in, like his face crushed in on top of a rock. Right. Even with the sixteen, you see a couple bits of white, which you can probably see that was his teeth. I'm gonna address uh, people and be like, "Friends, I I don't agree with the looting, but you know, I I don't I don't know how much we should persecute this guy. He's not, you know, he didn't he didn't murder our friend or anything like that. Uh, he's it- being a little uncouth." With... Ziggy, yes, he abandoned me and Mela in that fight. Mela was down. I was surrounded by five plus enemies, and he ran away. That is true. That is what I'm angry about. He wouldn't have gotten that far with Belrum's stuff. That doesn't bother me as much. We would have taken him down. I say, even though I missed. I agree with you guys. I just I'm feeling. I I would I I sh- I should have known what was going on with Balrog. I should have sensed what was going on, and I I'm feeling a little remorse, a little guilt at 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 seeing this. You've got nothing to feel guilty about, Ziggy. Well, I just wonder how much us attacking each other is going to help the situation. However running around and stealing things off of people's bodies is way not what I would call noble uh, uh, heroic behavior. Well, just keep kicking a man while he's down, don't you? Well, we Uh, didn't at least loot a man while he's down. Like, you are earning at this point. You've earned all the kicks you're you're getting. What were you intending to do with it? With all his stuff? I just, you know, needed to see what he had. I, just, it's, I'm not, I was not going to like ditch you all to, to sell his belongings. You know, if How I would know that, eke out a thief's existence, I wouldn't need a whole party to travel with. If I was I trying mean, to be stealthy, I would not be jumping off of towers. You know, could find more people than that. It's, it's, it's not this. It's This all seems like the stories of someone who got caught doing something and was not planning on explaining themselves. I'm going to send a mental command to Hydran, who is at the gate right now, to keep a watch in case uh, any dragon army start heading here. Look, if I can just say something to you all, I know that on more than one occasion, I've maybe be- betrayed your trust, given you a, a jaded perspective of who I am, but but the glimpse that you've seen is not but a shimmer of the real Dastion, of who I want to be. I just, I'm not strong enough by myself. I, you say I ran away, but what was I supposed to do? Pull out my flute and sing a song for them? You have a big-ass trident. Pull it out yes, and stab some people. It's it, the damn thing's so heavy. I, I barely know how to use it. I don't know. Also... Your weapon is too heavy for you to use in combat. Maybe you should work with a lighter weapon. I went with this nice little rapier. Well, there are plenty of weapons around for you to go loot. How about we put all of Belrim's things in the bag of holding? I was going to say, a good way to start dealing this uh, and saying you're sorry is giving all of Bellrum's loot over to us as the party. Give it uh, to the bag of holding. We need. Well, I wasn't we'll, trying to keep it from you. It's not like I, I tried to sneakily take his stuff. You guys saw it happen. I wasn't trying to personally profit off of it. Well, I mean, I I, like think... I said, I've got these letters here that are obviously meant for you lot. We'll, I'm we'll, ready we're to gonna, pass we're them gonna, out. Gonna... We're going to get to the letters, definitely. But, like, why you could have started with looting bad guys. There's, like, look how many enemies there are. Like, uh, you start with looting the bad guys before you start looting uh, comrades and stuff like that. Anyway, you give... You uh, use your weapon. How do you think you're going to be able to use Belrum's? Yeah, no kidding. His are a lot heavier. While they're having this conversation, Mela just goes through them and sits next to Belrum and takes his hand and just sits there, just kind of looking at him. If that's okay. While they're still talking. 
listen. I know how everything has looked, and I know that you haven't necessarily gotten a lot of faith in me, and I guess I don't fully want to have faith in you lot either. But what I just saw, what we just accomplished here, shows me that you lot are one determined group. Great in, in multiple areas. Mila, I saw her stand up three or four times to banish dozens of ghosts out around her, striking multiple enemies. All while I sit there and strum on my loot. I, I tried to make an attack once or twice. I'm just extremely unfamiliar with it. I've never had to rely on myself. You know, I've just always had to lean on someone else and I'm tired of leaning on someone else. I want you all to forgive me and I want to do better. I want to serve my penance by being someone who's not completely useless outside of a tavern or back alley gambling ring. Well, you've definitely practiced using your words to get out of things. I just silently head over to you, Daz, and take out Ryder with the bag of holding and hold it open for you to put things into. Let's start there. Vera is reminded when Belram wanted to train all of the Calamon Guard who were obviously just as terrible as their job, so can't really say anymore. Just means you need training. I'm going to go sit over next with uh, Mela. All right. We need Dash just starts to transfer items into the uh, yeah. building. I think we need to start thinking about proper burial ceremonies and figuring out how to properly care for our friend. I think Dashin, maybe want make yourself useful and you go like loot the bad guys on the other side of the camp while we talk with uh, while we uh, go through these letters and stuff because I think they're gonna kill you soon <laughs> if you if you uh, 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 aren't careful. Mela, how you doing? I'm okay. Just wish there was something we could do. But I think Ziggy's right. I think we need to think about burying him and, and putting him to rest in a way that will honor him as a warrior. Well, first, first things first. I am going to pull out two copper from my uh, my bag. Um, I'm going to help roll Valorum over on his back and place copper in each eye. And I'm going to cast Gentle Repose. As you're doing this, what is the highest perception check of everybody? Like passive? Passive, yeah. 16. 16. Lower. Tashin. Do I see this? Uh, passive recession is under your ability scores. Or saves. Under the saving throws. Oh, yeah. oh, oh. 14. 14. Uh, Mela and Ziggy, as Vera's doing this, you mm -hmm. see Carrie just standing there looking at Beryl's body. Here. Come here. I sort of hesitate, still holding tight onto Rideru, both hands clutching, and take a very tentative step forward, but don't get much closer. I go and 
sort of gently grab one of her hands. Are you okay? Uh, somebody in chat just question. brought up brought up a very good point, Vera. Uh, as you try to put the coins over the eyes, you can definitely see the face is indented and like what would be eyes. You don't really have eyes anymore. It's more of a mush. Mutilating him too. Makes sense. Oh. Yeah, Carrie's just staring at Bellroom's face, what's left of it. And it seems like she's on the verge of saying something, but words fail her and she just closes her mouth again in tears. Finally, well up. And fall down her face silently. I'll sort of follow her gaze of what she's looking at and then try and turn her away a little bit and give her a hug. Very hesitant hug, but still I wrap my arms around and just give her a hug. I sort of bury my head in your shoulder and just start quietly sobbing. And between the sobs, you can start to hear Carrie say, I did this. I don't think you did, Carrie. I just shake my head and can't get anything else out. I just squeeze a little bit tighter. I guess as all this is happening and items are being transferred to the bag of holding, when Dashjan picks up the Adzi of Bellrooms, before he places it into the bag, the, he notices that the Adzi seems to shrink a whole lot and get a lot lighter. What are y'all doing? Um, can I make like a history check to see if I uh like know of Belram's tribe and what rites dwarves might you know, ceremonial burial is particular group of dwarves might have or something like that? Give me a history check. Uh uh eleven. Not quite sure. Yeah, Bellroom and I never really talked about what his particular group or tribe is and stuff, so I, I don't know. I will say this, you probably, with 11, you, you will think of, uh, um, what's her name? Cudgel? Cudgel. You'll think of Cudgel yeah. as you're trying to recall. Well, I mean, we'll definitely invite her to the, I mean, to the ceremony. What I'm saying is that. you probably think to ask her. Oh, yeah. That's a good point. Um, she's back with the other group, right? She's back with the Dragon Army. That Not Dragon Army. Uh, the right. army that y'all came with that's following yeah. y'all guys around. Yeah, we haven't talked to them in a while. Nope. We tried to before this battle. We tried to get uh, back up, remember? They were too far away. But we it's all okay. understand. Sorry. Hydrin can carry the bellroom for now. We'll take him back to Cudgel. That's what that spell was for. It'll keep him... It'll keep him okay for now. That makes sense. So our goal would then to be to deliver the body back to Cudgel? You need to meet up with uh, 
the rest of the army before we continue more. We gotta take these uh, elves back anyway to some semblance of safety. That makes sense. They need protection along the way. Kind of sheepishly, Bastion says, you know, he may have said what he wanted done with him and his belongings in his in these letters. Would you like me to keep them out or put them in the bag? All right, everyone. He seems very insistent about it. Do we want to stop and, and re read these letters while we're standing here? In enemy territory? Surrounded I mean, by... I believe we took care of most of the enemies in the immediate area. I'm... I'm I have to admit... We've all before, though. That's I true. want to read it. I have to admit I'm very curious to see what Belra might have written us. I'm surprised to hear he was literate. Can you, uh, bring uh, uh, Stardust forward? He can keep a lookout, same as, uh, Hydra's doing at the gate, and yeah, we, we can sit here and read it, I guess. I can, of course, bring Stardust forward, and I'll take an action to do that, and then we're all surprised that Stardust is much bigger and has wings. Ooh. Stardust, what happened to you? And he's like, like uh, I think he's medium sized now, so he's like the. And size he's of the also wolf. white colored now. Yeah. A dragon owl, no! Kill it! <laughs> uh, and he unfurls and stretches his wings and gives us a cunning smile. Um. And I'll be like, uh, yeah, Stardust, fly up to the tower, keep an eye out for any bad guys while we deal with this situation. Which he did, then does. Because he can fly now. Which is awesome. I'm going to um, let you guys start reading while I go over to check on the elves and the kinder to make them know what's up because they're just hanging out by the gate waiting to see what's going on. Probably scared because they don't know the enemies are all dead. Well, you don't want to see what he's written? I don't need to see what he wrote, you guys. I'll see what he wrote no. me later. So each of y'all reading your letters all at once. Who's getting Laura Wynn's letter? Are we going to like read them out or anything? I don't know if Laura Wynn's letter is canon. I just said that it was there. <laughs> it's there. All right. And uh, how we discuss with uh, uh, with uh, Garris here is um, just like in the movies, if somebody opens a letter, uh, Baron, like his it's over the audio is overtaken like the person who wrote it yeah, reads voice it. over yeah uh, voice over okay so Barum, would you like to go ahead and take it away i i can who is i'll i'll open I, mine carry tears hers open as fast as she can sir by the okay. meal ziggy okay Jastin, are you reading yours i i think vera said she's not going to read hers i will i will be but not as eagerly as everyone else like i'm <laughs> Not wanting to be the first okay. to do anything right now. So I heard Ziggy was the first one. <clears throat> so I'm going to read Ziggy's letter first. I figured get it out of the way. He's just going to accuse me of being a dragon. How did you know? No. <laughs> <laughs> Ziggy, if these words find their way to you, it means I've embarked on a journey from which I may not return. In this moment of reflection, I want to share a sentiment that has lingered in the caverns of my thoughts. Your path as a ranger, zigzagging between the branches of trust and doubt, have not gone unnoticed. Your presence in our band has been a puzzle I've struggled to solve. Doubt has been a stubborn companion, questioning whether your intentions align with ours. Yet amid this uncertainty, beacons of trust have emerged, Vera, Mela, and Perry. Their faith in you has been unwavering, a testament that speaks louder than my reservations. Lorwyn says you have the potential to be a renowned ranger and that she will help you get there with that bow and my faith in her is absolute. Vera's keen perception sees beyond the surface, glimpsing the truth in the shadows. Mela's compassionate heart extends to all embracing even those who may seem elusive. Carrie's instincts, sharp as a dagger's edge, have cut through deceit before. Trust, Ziggy 
is a rare currency in our perilous journey. And while I may not fully understand your methods or the depths of your abilities, I recognize your attempts to navigate this rough terrain. It's my hope that you find the confidence in yourself and in Stardust before it's too late. For I believe you have untold potential that could safeguard us in moments of peril. As I depart, my caution transforms into hope. Perhaps you are indeed trying your best, navigating a path fraught with doubt and self-discovery. The road to trust may be winding, but Carrie and Vera have taught me that I must choose to believe that, like the seasons, people can change. May your journey bring you clarity, Ziggy. In the company of these steadfast friends, I hope you find the strength to be the person they see in you. Wishing you a trail of stars and a sky of open possibilities, Belra. All right, I'll quietly fold the letter up and uh, kind of place it in my uh, pocket and kind of looking thoughtfully over at uh, Belron's body. Um, I will wonder what, where, uh, how, how did someone who jumped off the tower and fell on his head write so well? You'll, you'll notice, by the way, uh, for everybody except for Dastion, these letters are very dusty and on old paper. So they were not written in the last, they do not look like they were just written a couple of days ago. They've journeyed for a while. Mm -hmm. I also think about maybe I should have some letters. I haven't written any letters for anybody. Hmm. Um, and I'll quietly wait for the next person's letter. Dustin, were you opening yours? <clears throat> yes. Okay. Elf. You've mocked my family since you first joined us, dressing up as my sister, Lorwyn, fooling Mela and Carrie. And if it weren't for Vera, who knows what you would have done to us in our sleep. Know this. Whatever realm I end up in, if you harm or allow via action or inaction any harm to come to Vera, Harry, or Mela, I will finish what I started with you. This is not a threat, but a sworn promise. And there's words in Dwarvish, which, do you read Dwarvish? I do not. Okay, so there are some words written there that you can't read. I swear this by the gods that Vera and Mela worship, and with the faith that Carrie has, Belrum of Stonehearth Clan, Thane. Is he is he holding? And it this such a way this letter looks like. I'm sorry, that's right. I was just going to say this letter looks like it was written. Well, obviously, it was written very recently. I'm going to Go say uh, everybody's kind of reading their letters separately. So any increments to try to read something like Dwarven or something like that, unless they, after the fact, take it and ask you to read it, you won't know. Uh, upon finishing reading the letter, Destin kind of uh, exhales. And it's like, uh, feels like he hasn't even left. Look back towards him, waiting for the next one to lead. And Rain, I just messaged you on Discord the words that you see there in Dwarvish. Gotcha. How about this? We I was about to say again. <laughs> we <laughs> lost him again. Yeah. Um. How about this? We'll go ahead and take an early break. Uh, see if he can fix his stuff. And yeah, he, we lost him. Drop phone call. Uh, we'll take an early break and see if we can get him back in. All right. Uh, if the guys would step back, uh, stick with us. We'll come back from our little early break and uh, we'll pick up where the letters left off. And welcome back. 
Uh, Bellroom's internet is back in the standing, so we we'll continue on. Thank you for the early break. I really need to use the bathroom anyway, so take it away, Bellroom. All right. Uh, Mela, are you going to read yours now, or are you going to hold? Yeah, I'll go ahead and read it right now. Okay. And just before I do that, Dastian, you did you do anything with the the words that you could not read? Uh, no, I'm tabling that okay. for later. Okay. Um, all right, Mayla. All right, now it's starting to hurt. Mayla, as I pen these words, it is with a heavy heart with the sorrow of parting, yet lightened by the gratitude of having known you. Should this message find you, know that my journey has reached its twilight, and I stand at the threshold of the unknown, compelled to leave behind a testament to your spirit, which has irre irrecoverably, I can't even say it now, changed the course of my life. In the tapestry of our shared adventures, your selflessness has been the most vibrant thread weaving through the very fabric of our being, strengthening and emboldening us. Your unwavering dedication, your boundless compassion have been a constant reminder of the goodness that exists in this world. Mela, your faith has been a beacon in our own darkness, a darkness I once believed impenetrable. Yet in your light, I found hope. In your grace, I found forgiveness. In your devotion to others, I found a path to redemption. You've shown me that true strength lies not in the might of one's arm, but in the depth of one's heart. To the party, you're more than a healer. You've been the very soul of our fellowship. Your willingness to sacrifice, to place the need of others above your own, has inspired us all to strive for better, to be more than we believed possible. Your actions speak louder than any sermon ever could, reminding us that it is not grand speeches or elaborate prayers that define a being, but the willingness to do whatever is needed to protect the ones we hold dear. The sanctity you bring to our group and our family is not just in the safe refuge to rest in, or in the divine words you utter, but in the divine actions you undertake. As I face the end, my only solace is in knowing that your light will continue to guide and protect those we care for. Your faith has changed my life, Mela, more profoundly than magic ever could. You've taught me the true meaning of courage, not as the absence of fear, but the resolve to face it for the sake of others. May your path be filled with the blessings you so freely bestow upon others. In the tapestry of our journey, you are the thread that binds us, the healer of wounds, both seen and unseen. Bellroom. Um, Mayla also folds up her letter, and just tucks it in her shirt where it'll be close to her heart. Um, and then, uh, keep she'll quickly look at the others and see if they're still reading before going to find Vera real quick um, as they continue reading their letters. Vera, are you still holding? I'm still holding. Okay. Gary, are you holding? I tore into that thing as soon as I could, sir. <laughs> <laughs> ah, all right. Oh, Gary. As I pen down these words... The weight of my heart mirrors the weight of my axe, heavy and unyielding. If you're reading this, 
It means that battles have come to an end for me, and I now walk a different path. But I need you to know, Carrie, that you've been the sunlight and the shadows of my life. Your laughter, a melody amidst the cacophony of war, has been my solace. In the darkest moments, your friendship and spirit have been a flame that refused to flicker out. You've changed the rhythm of our existence, made the hardships bearable and the victory sweeter. Your presence, Carrie, has been a balm to the wounds that steel and potions can't heal. Your honesty, the light that dances in your eyes, even in the darkest of moments, has been a beacon of inspiration. Your agile steps through life have shown me a perspective beyond the confines of stone and steel. In the face of certain death, I find solace in knowing that honesty, courage, and the strength of spirit endure through you. You've been more than a comrade. You've been the heartbeat of our group. In your strength, your courage, I found that refuge. Your resilience has been the anchor that kept us steady in the storm. I've watched you face adversity with the grace that moved mountains in my soul. As I leave this world, I want you to carry the knowledge that you've changed lives, especially mine. Your kindness, your unwavering spirit, they've been a testament to the beauty that exists even in the harshest landscapes. You are the heart here, and any tears shed for me, I hope, are not the tears of sorrow, but of remembrance, of gratitude for having known you. Hold on to that strength, Carrie. It's a force that can mend the deepest wounds and illuminate the darkest paths. The world with its battles and uncertainties is a better place because of you. Cherish the memories, and in every laughter, every shared story, I'll linger on, watching over you like a silent guardian. Know that I am at peace now, for I carry with me the memory of a rogue whose honesty, attitude, and strength became a legend in my heart. Pelgrim. As Carrie finishes reading the letter, it sort of, her hand falls to her side, still holding the letter. And she just stares at the ground where she had been reading the letter and ponders the words. All right. The Lorwyn letter, does anyone anyone want to do anything with that? Uh, Mayla's just going to hold on to it in the hopes that she can give it to somebody who can at least give it to Lorwyn if she can't give it to her herself. I want to hear it. And then there. So, Mela, you you know you can open this. Actually, there there is one more, and I'll I'll kind of say it because Bastion already brought it up. Inside of the, do you have the the notebook, Mela? Who has no. the notebook? I think Daz still has. Daz, you still have it? I suppose uh, I could still have the notebook and an additional letter. Okay. okay. I, I, I'm doing this that we're all kind of reading it at approximately the same time. Yeah. All right. Well, then there's nothing else for me. Right. Well, as he seems to notice some reading, some not reading, um, and folds up the letter he just read, um, Say, so I do have his his journal, and it looks like there's another letter here. It's um, addressed to both uh, Mila and, and Vera. Uh, Mila and Carrie, Carrie, excuse me. I had to switch back. It wasn't quick enough. <clears throat> and I guess I hand the letters out to anyone, the letter and the journal, to whomever wants to take it. 
Mayla, you said you were going to see Vera, right? Yeah, I think I've already walked away. Yeah, I'll take the letter, but I'll tuck it away for now. I also take the notebook. What is the notebook? Well, there, there is a note that's there that has your name and Mayla on it. Kind of like there's a leather strap, a piece of coal with a symbol etched on it. And the, the letters that everyone had were in the back of it. This is in the front between the leather strap and the front cover. Okay, I'll hold on to it until Mayla can come and read it with me. So the camera pans over to Mela and Vera. I'm heading to check in on the the elves and uh, Tina, uh, Tina, the uh, the the hinder that was a uh, scaredy cat. So you completely walked away. Yeah, uh, okay. I mean, they they are just standing there and they don't know what's going on while we're sitting here reading this. So, and some of them were very hurt. So I need to go with them to tell them what's going on before they flee. Well, you, the last commands they got were from Mela to try to get the gate open. I and, didn't know that though. Yeah, as you're walking over there, actively opening the gate. They will see Hydrin on the other side. Yep. Hydrin's just standing there looking stoic. <clears throat> Her uh, damn the, the battle's hard. over. You guys can stand down. Vale, uh, uh redeemed or hurt them hard. So the Nets attack will be crit damage. It'll be a critical hit. <clears throat> Go ahead. Now's Sorry. The, now's the time for Vera to go punch Dash. Uh, Emotional damage. Wouldn't be mine though. True. Sure. I'll have I could have Hydrin go charge him. Then Jugan could, uh, you know, roll that damage. Yeah. So what's going on? Uh, I'm I'm. Telling the uh, the elves and them that uh, the battle is over. You guys can relax. There's no gen danger currently. Oh, thank God. What's going on over there? What what's what's wrong with your people? Uh, we lost one of ours. Hmm. Okay. I'm sorry for your loss. What do you, what is your command? I believe you talked uh, about a settlement when I let you out of your cage, Kina or Benaya. Yeah, let me get to her real quick. Here, here. Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, that was me. That was me. That was the. Hi. You're feeling the kinder over here. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was me. I can take you to my settlement. And yes, we can take you back to the uh, blue shrine. How, how far away? Uh, well, we can say Melee got there. There? How's everybody over here? Um, a little worse for wear, but uh, at least they're standing. Um, is your settlement safe? Oh, no. This one has a settlement for us to maybe take refuge in. Uh, yes, uh, my settlement is safe. But of course, I can bring you there. We have a few hundred people. Uh, 
it is a growing community. How long would it take us to get there from here? Uh, let's see. Uh, you guys have that blessing still. I'll tell you what, two days for you guys, but like four for her. Oh, but oh, actually, you can bring people within your your blessing. So for you guys, it'd be about two days. Right. What do you think, Vera? I think we uh, we need to find some place to rendezvous with uh, different people, at least. Regroup. Does that seem like a good place to head to, at least for on our way? How are they doing back there? Well, you didn't, wouldn't really know it unless you really do Bellarum, but, uh, you know, he's a poet, um, and he, uh, he definitely left some meaningful things for each of us. So I think they need just a moment longer before we should start planning and hit the road. Uh, I would suggest you elves, uh, pick up as many weapons as you think you can carry or use. I don't know if any of you guys know how to, but now would be the time to do so. Any supplies whatsoever you can pilfer from, from these guys. Uh, sure thing. Uh, we'll make our way back to the Blue Shrine Phoenix to meet up with, uh, Isper. Um, uh, tell your elf friends, uh, thank you for sending you all and him uh, to rescue us. Um, by all means, uh, thank you so much. There's nothing we can do to repay you. Obviously, we've been looted and have no money, so, but uh, we'll let Isfer know that you rescued us. And they take off, and then Kenna, she says, All right, and uh, I'll wait for you when you're ready. We, I'll, we can go to my settlement. I'll stay here with the pretty little elk. Vera, do you think we should grab um, maybe a tent or two? I, at least for tonight, I can't do the hut. Um, well yeah, we especially because it'll look like it's Dragon Army's tent. They might not attack what they think's their own. And hell, we have a dragon now with us. Yeah, that was a surprise. <laughs> Where was that, you know, <laughs> 10 minutes ago? <laughs> well, it takes a while to build up these things. <laughs> I believe we just got just the right number of experiences. <clears throat> um, uh, and and he was he was he was growing, maybe uh you know absorbed a bit of Bellroom spirit and grew a few more uh, sizes. I will, I'll be right back, Mela. I am going to head to the captain's tent, as I was there when Dastion questioned the elves about his stupid loot and they told him there was a chest in there and that would be the place to look. What is Carrie, Dashin, and Ziggy doing at this moment? Since y'all are not... And is Mele, do you go back to them? Yeah, I'll go back and tell them the plan. Okay. Mm. All right, Mele, right, go so back we're... and tell the plan. And then... right. um, so it seems like the sea elves have already hit the road um, but Kina has a, the other kinder, sorry if you weren't there to meet her but um, 
her settlement is only a couple of days away from here, so we're gonna head there um, before we try and meet up with the rest of our army. Um, so we're bidding so... the the sea elves farewell for now. Are right, we sure yeah. we're sure that's safe? They don't need escorted or anything. Well, they said they're just gonna go back to the Blue Shrine Temple um, and talk to Ishvern there. I guess they know a faster way than what we can take. Well, I've, yeah, I think bearing our fallen comrade back to his as his people, as far as we can tell, and meeting up with our army is probably our best uh, bet. So, yeah, that sounds like a good plan. Yeah, um, at least for the rest of tonight, or maybe tomorrow, um, when we rest, I can't do our safe hut. Um, so I suggested maybe grabbing a couple of tents us to use and Vera seemed to think that was a good idea since it was dragon army hopefully they wouldn't attack us especially since we have stardust who has wings now yeah uh how about stardust can keep an eye out for us while we loot everything we need from the camp uh but i think we should roll out as soon as possible because you know obviously the en the enemy army knows where this camp is uh who knows what kind of like if they had a messenger system or something like that but we need to uh, grab a bunch of stuff and get out of here uh, as fast as we can. Yeah. Well, and Daz, um, the sea elves said uh, thanks for coming to rescue them. And for bringing us along, I guess. He looks your direction to just acknowledge that he heard you, but he says nothing and proceeds to kind of you know, kick his feet wandering through the center of camp in plain sight. Great. Well, I think there has already started uh, gathering some supplies. Um, so, uh, Carrie, do you want to go find something or do you want to, to wait with Bellroom while we look? At this point, Carrie takes the notebook back out from wherever she stashed it and um, presents it to you and says, uh, I think this was Bellworm's notebook and it's got our names on it, so I don't know if we want to take a look at this or maybe save it for later, but... Well, we can get the lads looking for things that we can take. We can have a quick look. Yeah. The lads and Vera. I'll sit down next to Kiri. I open the notebook. All right. The paper that you have, or that was there, it just says, Kiri and Mela, if you have this, then I am no longer walking next to you. Please deliver my adze to the mage, Wyan, back in the city, as I promised her the first magical item I found would go to her. There is also a dwarven armorer, brother and sister in the city. I ask that the stone holding this book closed, along with the strap, be given to the sister. No words will be needed as she will understand. The book itself should go to cudgel and my bracers with it. The following letters should be given to the persons whose names are written on the outside. Please do not give it to anyone else as they are protected by YN for the named person. If that person is no longer with us, then the spell has passed. Elmer. Okay, I've got uh, give Adzi to Wyan. Um, Kajul, give the book and the braces. Uh, something about a stone to a sister. I missed that one. Yep. So there is a, a piece of coal with an emblem and a leather strap, and that's what was holding everything together. The note said to, it, back in the city, there was a, a dwarven brother and sister. They were the armorers um, that we had encountered uh, together as a party. Uh, give the strap and the stone to the sister. And you don't need to say anything. They'll know what that means. Okay. Or she'll know. 
Uh, I'm assuming Bill Muir tell me and remind me. <laughs> Message me. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll send it over to you. Thanks. Appreciate That's why I needed that that uh, mage's name because I was like, oh, what was her name? Because I had to make that promise to her. Remember, I couldn't afford anything. I was like, oh. And then if you op uh, are you going to open the book? No. Since I now know no. it is full cudgel, I will not open it. Mm, did I say it was just for? I said to give it to her. Yeah. Here, I, I'm going to rephrase. That, like, it's just I, for her. <laughs> I, I'm going to rephrase that. Sorry. Uh, you, you can open it. It's just to hand over to her with the bracer so she knows what it is. That I'm no longer. Right? Because I would not assume you're carrying Bellroom away. So if you open it, let me know. If you don't, let me know. I mean, if this Either is for Kajua, I'm not sure I want to read it. <laughs> it's it's pretty thick. Uh, I'll say that. Can I just take it and maybe just flip through? Um, yeah. You, you see there are uh, entries uh, in there, just like a couple sentences, some spacing, a couple sentences, some diagrams in there. If you want to read any, just like give me a number between 1 and 38, and I'll tell you what it is. It, it's a diary. I mean, this is a obvious diary. These are all different entries in there. I'll pause and read 27. 27. A year has passed since I was cast out from the clan. A year since I stood alone against a world that seemed determined to break me. Yet here I am standing tall among the ranks of Cudgel's ironclad regiment. We have faced horrors and adverse adversaries that would have made the stoutest hearts quail. Yet we stand unbroken. With each battle, I feel my old self slipping further away, replaced by someone stronger, more focused, someone who belongs. I'll just close it and give it back to Carrie. Say, um, would you mind keeping it all in right of rue for now? Yeah. Now, gently feed it into Ride a roo. Ride a roo! You're always so happy, mate. Ride a roo! Yeah, I'll. Uh, uh, unless you need me, I'll just stay here, I think, if if that's all right. Let me know if there's something that needs unlocking or if you need a sneaky sneak. But um, yeah, I might just. And I sort of force myself to look at. Bell room again. I'd like to stay here with him if, yeah, unless you know what I mean. Right. Um, I'll come and get you if you if we need you. Um, just don't wander off, all right? <laughs> I don't think I can lose anybody else today. And I'll yeah. go find. Um, I guess I'll follow Vera to see where she went because I think I can still see Daschen and probably Ziggy looking around. Uh, Vera, are you going to open the letter at all this session? Uh, we'll see character-wise if we get to a moment that she would. At the moment, she can't fall apart. She this is this is not the moment the moment to fall apart. Okay, the only reason I ask is if you don't, I'm gonna give permission for Varys to drop out of the call. I'll be in chat, so if the moment comes, I can join back in if you want. Okay. That or works. if not, I can just send the message and you guys can read it. And if any of you want this, I actually can send it all to you in Discord or each of yours to on Discord. Well, I like when she, I would love for when she does read it that you still put it on stream, if that makes sense. Yeah, whatever you guys want. I, I leave it up to 
to Nihilish how she wants to handle it. Okay. Will you be dropping out of the call now? Yeah, I'm dropping. Um, give me a second. Let me find his cam. Of course, it's the one up top. All right. Uh, what is everybody doing? Daz is, you know, just walking around camp, reflecting. Not really doing anything. Okay. Contemplating would be the better word. And can you remind me, did Daz give Carrie Adzi? Or did yeah, I put it all it? in the back. Okay. I put all of it in the back. All right, so I'll just place you like about right here. Um, uh, their apartment's a tent. Uh, Mayla with the he'll follow. Carrie standing by Bellroom. Where's Ziggy at? Uh, well, yeah, Ziggy would be going around. He's helping getting the tents and gear and stuff like that. Stardust is making circles overhead, enjoying flying around, but also like keeping an eye out. You can see him like forgetting that he's supposed to be keeping an eye out. He's just kind of enjoying flying around. And then he snaps back to like, oh, I'm supposed, I'm on mission. I'm on duty. And like right. looks, but goes back to looking hard at the ground and stuff. Um, uh, at some point when it's convenient, I think I'm gonna go. I, I need to go tell Dasha not to be such a, a, a down in the dumps, dumpy ahead. pants, self pitying. Uh, but I'm gonna wait a little while. On okay. But I'm thinking it. That was that was a, a brief a look into um, Ziggy's interior monologue. I'll have him flying in the air there. So everybody knows what we're looking at. And, uh... All righty. Uh, so who let's let's, I guess, snap over to the people at the tent. This is Vera and Mela. I am stopping my way over there, visibly shaking. I'm just very angry. My intention in finding this chest is that I really do hope someone's loot is in there because I'm going to break it. Okay. Get to the chest. Um, this hut is larger than the others in camp it's made, it is made of high stretch over a wooden frame with bone spikes protruding from the ground around it as you get inside you see an ornate chest um, I don't think anybody's looted the bodies of anybody nope okay you see a lock on the outside of the chest. I am going to attack it. <laughs> okay. As I have no other way of doing anything with it. And I really want to hit something right now. Okay. I am just going to use my natural 20 for this. All right. <laughs> I'm just angry. Um, it would be a 25. As you go to swing at the lock, your hammer bounces off of it like it's immune. I wouldn't say magically protected, but like it's immune to damage. Of course it is. Everything is. I can't hit anything. You hit it. It just <clears throat> the boom bounces and lays right back there. I'm just extremely angry. 
I'm trying not to lose it. Uh, with uh, my faith, uh, death is the ultimate goal to die in honor and glory. And yet I'm just so angry right now. Uh, Amelia, you probably arrive about this time. Uh, did I see her go into the big tent, or did I hear the? She the told thing you hit? she was right. And you you would yeah. definitely you would definitely yeah. heard the big hint anyway. So <laughs> playing. <laughs> I timidly walk in. Everything okay in here? Perfect. Everything is perfect. What are you trying to do? I was trying to find Daz's stupid loot. As while you were down, this chest was the only thing that was important to him. Hmm. Well, if anyone can get onto it, I think Carrie would. Do you want me to go get her real quick? Hmm. Don't really want to bother her. Alright, well, um, it's got a lock, right? So that means yeah. there's got to be a, a key. Oh, um, I pull out the jailer's keys I still have. Would they have? No. Nope. Would they keep me on this? Now, as you hmm. try to fit, you can definitely tell these jailer keys are much bigger than the key that is needed for here. You, don't, you can't even put them in the lock. A keyhole. Oh, good. Because cause I would have felt really stupid at <laughs> one of those words. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not one of those. Uh, desk? Alright. Uh, I'll go and look at the desk. Try and see if I can find a key on it. Uh, you don't have to roll for it because you can definitely tell that uh, whatever is here has been long looted. Just like it's bare. Nothing's in it. All right. Uh, nothing here. Maybe he oh, kept wait. it on him. Dashin, did you take the letters off the table or did you just leave them there? I had said I grabbed a handful of the documents or whatever from the, like okay. what would be, could be battle plans, military correspondence, etc. Uh, you might see like a paper here and there, but. Uh... I would have grabbed whatever was left when I was in there. Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, Carrie, you would grab the rest of the pa couple papers that would complete the rest of Dashian's paperwork. Probably on his body. Right. On top the tower. All right. Uh, do you want me to go get it while you stay here? Or do you want to go? I trust you. Can you guard this? Yeah. I will go back toward the tower. Right. And I'll stay in the tent. All right. Uh, Dashin and Ziggy. Uh, uh, I assume in about this time, Ziggy probably would come up to you because it's been a little bit of time. If Ziggy still wants to do that. Uh, yeah. Uh, Dashin, I noticed you're over here moping around, kicking rocks. You're feeling sorry for yourself. What's going on? Well, it's just, I've only known you all, what, about 10 days? That'd be an appropriate timeline, 10 days? I think it's been three or four days. Oh, just three or four? <clears throat> I'll say about a week. Well, I forgot I was muted. <laughs> okay. I've only known you all for about a week now, and I, I've really just kind of, taking turns picking on everyone here and trying not to become attached to anything because no one ever stays constant in my life and uh, you know while, while I was only taking my own life into regard I watched many of you take drastic measures against your own well-being to help me 
Yeah, I guess my question is, did you, I mean, have you had a lot of friends? Have you made friends? Is this the first time that you've had friends? Because there's just some certain actions that you've done that are a little shocking uh, when it when it comes from someone who's supposed to be, you know, like on our side and stuff like that. Uh, the, uh, you know, we, we, we you need to know that you can rely on somebody. And while uh, you have been helpful and great in a number of ways and quick with the joke and, uh, you know, great with a, a, a really inspiring song every once in a while, you also do the most cunning, weird, backstabby spy stuff uh, that anyone's ever seen. Like you literally took, stole one of our teammates' face uh, at one point. You, you, you're, you're looting bodies and things like that. Like where, like where is your understanding of what it means to, you know, interact with your fellow, uh, fellow people? Where's your moral, you know, compass? He exhales deeply, and he goes. <clears throat> I told you all when I first met you that Ishvan sent me here. I said that Ishvan and I were long friends and that he was just looking out for my well-being by sending me here, but that's not really it. See, Ishvan's hardly what any of you would consider a friend. He's just one of the few people that that believes in me, I guess. I don't, it's hard. I mean, I've been at the bottom of the ocean. I haven't left the sea in many, many years. I've been trying to hone my craft for certain things, but I just reached a point where I cannot improve my music anymore. Not without the strumming anyway. You I just can't really, compete with that. You, you seem really fixated uh, on this object. Uh, maybe you have some sort of a, uh, you know, issues there i would think that i mean we have a, 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 an un, a you know we remember our good friend ishvan and you know ishvan was a good judge of character knowing that you know he was uh, he, he was uh, you were sent to him with with his blessing or whatever kind of went a lot in your favor you know it made us you know kind of accept you into the team uh kind of ishvan's vouching for you and stuff like that um but you you just see you came uh you're you're almost golem like obsessed with this object and stuff it's affecting your relationships um uh and maybe like try to let go a little bit and understand that the the humans and the people and the organisms around you might be more important than whether you know you have a fancy music instrument like i mean if you just keep practicing you might find that the music was in you the whole time You sound just like Ishvan. I learned a lot from him. <laughs> I'm, I, I know that I've apologized already and, and I can't really find the logical explanation for some of my actions aside from that you say to kind of let it go or go easy on myself, but to you it might just sound like I'm searching for some instrument. But you have to understand, like, this is the the pinnacle obsession of my thoughts for the better part of 30 years this is something that I can't take my music to the next heights without something that my family the Yinvery family has been known to have in its possession all but the last 30 years true you might say that my intentions could be misguided but I also offer up that that it's not easy to let go of your dream for 40 years just in the blink of an eye. Wow. Uh, Fishman, you are really into this flute, and I understand. I mean, I understand the fair family heirloom. Uh, my, uh, you know, I, I have a number of possessions that were you know, passed on to me by ancestors and things like that. Um, you just can't let it come, you know, between you. And don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to get you to apologize anymore. What I'm seeing now is a lot of, you know, you're just a self-pitying and, and, and grumpy and stuff like that. And this, this party is not going to uh, react 
well to that. But like you were even better off with a, uh, you know, being a standoffish, egotistical narcissist. That at least was a little more fun for, uh, uh, you know, uh, fun for your friends. Uh, you know, if you just stand around here and kick rocks the whole day, uh, you, you're, you're never going to heal this, 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 this thing. You have to like kind of move on. The most important thing is that the next ch choice you make, the next choice you make, try to stop for a moment and, you know, think, what would Bellroom do? WWBD. He's going to sarcastically mutter, best not think that when I'm in high places. No, I am <laughs> I'm not saying that you need to rush headfirst into battle, but Balram cared, right? Balram cared about each of his th each of his people, and even if the gods dropped his most favorite loot right in front of him in the middle of combat, he is not going to abandon his friends to go grab that object, right? We've got to understand that you, you, you've you got to show us in the next you know uh, in the next uh, in the next choice you have to make that you can make a choice for the team. And not just for Dash. Until then, no one wants to see him open around. <laughs> and he kind of gives him like a like a not uh, like a frat boy kind of punch on the punch on the shoulder, but it's awkward. Like it's the first time he's ever done it. Yeah. He takes the takes the little punch and. T tilts his head a little bit and puts a small smirk on his face and he says um, an artist can recognize genius words like that Ziggy thank you I shall I shall heed them and I do want to prove to you all and the rest of the favored few that I can be useful even if it is just picking up spirits a little bit or or something but i suppose standing here idly by wallowing in myself is just another form of selfishness that i have to learn to let behind so thank you thank you for that and you just uh you can't run away uh you, you know you can't run away from uh uh battle you can't run away from your 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 comrades falling uh you know you can't run away from the dragon army uh we have to stand and you know we have to stand and fight whether we like it or not because the fate of grin depends on it right uh so uh yeah we gotta sally forth and slay some monsters and sing songs about it Uh, yeah, and I'll go for it. I'm going to continue packing. All right. I'm assuming we're grabbing like a bunch of, of gear, right? Rations and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, maybe investigation check. And uh, as the camera pans over to back of the tower where Kiri is still sitting with Belorum, is Kiri doing anything particularly? 16. Uh, you find. Roughly about 11 rations. Uh, you can find four tents in the area you're at. Um, a set of cooking supplies, you can put them all together. I thought you were going to say a set of cookies. I'm like, hell yeah. About roughly what time of day is it? It's still middle of the night. Oh, okay. Uh, Carrie has sort of taken up a vigil next to Bellroom's body. She's sitting with her back to Bellroom. Just sort of staring off into the night, maybe looking up at the stars. Tears still running down her face, just they don't seem to be able to stop. And she has the words 
from Bellarum's letter just going around and around in her head as well as just a storm of other thoughts that almost seem to be turning into a whirlwind within her mind. Uh, Vera, as you're coming around the tower, you see Carrie like this in the state. I don't know if you want to do anything. As you're approaching mm -hmm. Vera, you quietly hear Carrie start to speak. Very quietly. And she says, You called me a light. I wonder if you knew just how much darkness there is inside me. How can I be a light when all I've ever known is the dark? I don't know if you interrupt or anything. <laughs> I will walk. I am not good in these situations, but I will walk up and wordlessly bend down to give you a hug. Unless that. Carrie just sort of, uh, she didn't realize she was there and, oh, hi. Uh, hmm. what do you need? What's going on? Are we leaving? No, there can't be light without dark. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> and she just like starts hysterically laughing and crying and You can tell this might have fucked her up a little bit. <laughs> She's just gonna keep laughing and crying unless you do something. <laughs> I'm just going to keep hugging her. I think she needs to get this out. Yeah, the laughter goes on for an uncomfortable amount of time, but eventually it turns back into sobs, and she hugs you back. He wouldn't have died if it weren't for me. I don't think that's the case, but I don't think I'll be able to change your mind either. I don't know how to explain it. I had something come over me. I fell off the tower and I was falling and something caught me and I could fall without dying, you know? Yeah, I think and, I saw you. And that was still on me when I went back up the tower and I figured, jump off the tower. It's faster to get down than climbing. So I did that and I didn't think... And I sort of look around at Bellroom. I didn't think you'd follow like that. I... And then, after he fell, I just thought he was catching his breath, you know? And I... I put a potion next to his hand. I could have given it to him. He was probably already gone before then. He was gone the minute he had the ground. I could have helped him, and I didn't. Harry, you didn't push him off that tower. Might as well have bloody idiot. No one could push Bellroom around. <laughs> that was his charm. And now this letter, he says, I was a light to him and lit up his world and how can I believe that when I'm the one that led him to his death? That's not, he wrote this ages ago. He... You know that's still how he felt. None of 
of us know what he felt. Well, he followed you. <laughs> exactly. To his death. Any one of okay, us could have died in that encounter. He went down too, if I recall. Yeah. Yeah, I did. I'll be alright. I just... Did you need something? You came back here. Nothing important. I... I'm just... Trying to make sense of things too. She sort of starts cleaning herself up and probably takes a handkerchief out of Rideroo and... And... <laughs> um, Rideroo! You know, no, I, I need to do something. I need to walk around. I need to fucking kill something. What, what do you need me to do? What'd you come here for? I came to go loot that captain's body for keys to his uh, chest. Keys? Who needs keys? And she immediately starts walking towards the <laughs> big tent, taking out her thieves tools as she goes, I almost got it. I was almost into it before. And then somebody interrupted me or something. Let's go crack open a chest. I'm going to look back at Bellroom for a minute, but get back up and follow her. All right. The camera pans over to the tent. Mila, as you're standing by the tent, someone approaches, which is not Carrie or Vera. Dashin approaches your tent. Um, hey, Mila, do you have a moment? Uh, sure. And I'll go stand right on the outside of the tent. In that battle last night, what... Why did you try to do anything to help me survive that? Um, I'm not really sure what you mean. You're... You're part of my grief. Of course I'm gonna... You know, make sure you're okay. But even while your own life and, and friends that you've had for, for months, years even, I don't know how long you've all traveled together, but certainly expending time and energy to help me made things more difficult. Well, for sure, it doesn't make it easier, but, you know, I think you still have a lot to learn, and I'm not going to hold that against you. I still have a lot to learn. I mean, I think, well, to be honest, I didn't really see you that much in the battle. I was kind of focused on other things, but, you know, I'm, I'm sure you tried and that was enough in the moment and I know next time you're going to try even harder well I wanted to talk with you about it because I want to know a little more about your god I witnessed firsthand beyond an extent of what I imagined were possible of manifesting from a being when you kept rising near the brink of death to cast multiple forms of magic and, and anchored the team down. I, I, I surely would not have been able to handle one of those things, let alone three, and you were able to, you and Vera, sword and shield. You had no weapons, and you did more than I did. Maybe it, it was your god, but if that is your god, then that's the god that I want to know also. Well, a lot of me jumping back up. Um, well, it had to do with Vera and 
I think I think Siggy, I think I felt that familiar stick in my back of uh being shot. Um but Well do you think that you know we could like pray or something to your god? Introduce me to him. I don't I don't really know how this works. Sure. We can we can pray to Michiko. Um, I'm sure she would like to hear your story and maybe shed some light in your life as she has in mine. Do you want to pray right now, or should we wait until we're a bit on the road? It's up to you. I, I mean, if we have but a minute, I I don't think I'll have all that much to say. I don't know. I just feel if I don't get something done now, I'm I'm just gonna. I don't want to continue being useless. Not for another minute. All right. Um, and I start leading him away from the big tent, probably closer to, like the prison area. Um, is this area all right? Um, just seems like it might be a bit quieter. Uh, yes, this is this will be fine. All right. And I'll kneel down and sort of gesture for Daz to kneel with me. Yeah, he, he imitates as best he can, which is pretty good. But he's kind of looking at you from the side as he's <laughs> kneeling next to you. Right, and I'll just start a prayer um, to Michiko. Um, what do you say? Say, Michiko, we are grateful that we have this chance to come together and remember a comrade, but more than that, remember that we are not just what we've done, but what we will do. Michigan, you know me, you've known me my whole life, um, and you've given me this blessing of your power. And I come here today with my friend Dastian, who wants to meet you and know you as well as I do. I sort of give Daz a, a little nudge. Just say, just say. Oh, so want. okay. We we just talk as if he were right, as if they were right here. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um. Uh, hello, Michael. It's it's me, Daz Chin. Have you heard of me before? <laughs> um. Look, Michael. I'm not one for prayer. I've never been one to really look into deities or divinity at all but but mystical i have witnessed firsthand your your power that has touched mila and while i try not to envy such a thing i do desire to protect these people to protect mila to protect carrie and vera and ziggy and stardust if i had to i want to protect ishvan mystical please if you could pour from your fount, I, I would like to learn some of, some of what you have so richly blessed Mila with. At this time, I would like Carrie, Ziggy, and Veer to take off their headsets and not listen in. Mila and Dashton. As you sit here praying in the middle of this dead night, as the stars start to shine brighter than ever before. Around you, the shadows fade away from this cursed place that you seek to find solitude in a god that has not really been seen in a while. 
And for you, Dashing, you know the gods have left this world, even the stories have. And then witnessing the acts of Mela in your travels, you know there must be something more now. And as you sit here and pray with Mela, the darkness around you engulfs into this weave of branches and wreath, making a wreath around you as the blue lines tether between each and around the wreath as it centers both of you within it. And as you guys are kneeling there praying, you see a very image of a beautiful entity, beauty beyond compare. It stands before you as you both look up. Mela, my sweet child. You bring a new person who wishes to believe. Is this correct? Yes. Yes, my lady. If a new follower, what is your name and what is your will? He uh, prostrates himself a, a tad more. Um, and says, "I'm I, I am, I am Dastian Yinvari, um, and I seek not to be useless. And if I, I want to be able to protect those who want your light in this world. Mela, do you trust this individual?" I do. All right. As you're not a divine follower yet, what do you seek most in this world? For years, Lady Mishko, I would have answered that question with my strumming but now I'm thinking I've been a little wrong with that all along tell me how much this strumming means to you what purpose does it give you your drive in this world Well, the strumming is a is a golden lute. It's it plays the most beautiful melodies that that just cannot be replicated. Its distinct sound is is separate, making all other instruments inferior. Some say that that playing it is akin to hearing the music of the gods. I just want to carry on my family's tradition of. Of, of being the, the wielder of the strumman, but there, I get... Right there. Family. You wish to carry on your family's tradition. And I sense a change with inside you. Maybe this new friendship that you have could be another extended family so to speak. How about this? I offer you a deal or a pact of some of these between you and me. If you honor this and keep my young follower Mela alive to carry on our will I would do everything within my power to find this strumming because I very much would love to hear you play it someday. Do you honor this? He head downs immediately and and says, um, yes, your your boundless grace is is most appreciated. I I would be happy to accept such a charge. 
that weapon on your back is also simultaneously a magical item of sorts of a magical instrument, correct? Uh, yes, this uh, this this trident of mine it can it, it has the ability to control water. Lay it before you. Uh, lay it before you in front of Mela and myself, please. Uh, he's he's nervous to relinquish this. Also, old habits die hard, kind of thing. Turns to Mela and just kind of looks at her, looking for approval or disapproval. I give him just a little nod. Yeah, he, uh, he takes off the 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 trident and collapses it down to its flute size and lays it on the ground. Swear upon this weapon, you'll use it to defend Mela within battle. I swear upon this weapon that I shall defend Mela, the follower of Mishikul, in battle. Till death takes you, or Pat is complete. Till death, and he takes a big gulp, till death takes me, or the pact is complete. With that, you see these bright teal blue waves originating underneath the trident as it raises above you, infusing her magic within her within it and it transports back into your hands you feel the power of Michigan in your hands and you now are charged with a deal a pat with Michigan until maybe perhaps one day you are a devote follower of her and as she says, thank you for your service. I'll be watching. And as the vision fades away, the reef fades away, and you're back into this area that you stood to pray in. I'll give you all a second to... Uh... Can I tell them to come back in now? Do you want them yeah. to come back in? It'd be okay. Okay. But fought, we're right where that just happened. Everything yeah, just yeah, exactly. whisked away. Okay. I'll I'll even uh because I, I want to say something to Mila. Go ahead. Okay. Are we back but, or no? Yeah, you can be. Okay. He turns to Mila and uh kind of breathing heavily and goes, Is that always gonna happen? Does that happen every time you pray? Not every time, no. But you do feel her presence when you pray. You just may not see her. Oh, thank the sea. That was scary. <sighs> that was Shin. Yes. I'm honored that you made the pact with Mishakul, but just know that I don't want you to die through while protecting me. Um, if you fall in battle, then that's one thing. But to fall specifically for me, that's just... I don't know. I don't think I'm ready to carry something like that, you know? But thank you. And I already feel, I guess, a little bit safer knowing that you'll be helping, helping me stay safe along with everyone else. Yes, I don't know how um, adept I am at such a thing yet, but I, I will try my best to uh, to start this new chapter in, in the story that is, or in the play that is, uh, that is my life. I would consider this moment just the intermission between, between acts. 
Well, I'm glad to have you by my side. Uh, yeah, if you have any uh, questions or just want to talk about Mishiko um, or anything, you can come find me or I'm sure Ziggy or maybe not the other two just yet, but just, we're here for you too, all right? Yes, uh, thank you. Thank you for that. And I think our conversation's closed. As the camera pans back to the tent, as a returning Carrie and Vera return to the tent, and you do not see... I'm currently picking the lock. Well, first off, you do not see Mela anywhere. Mela was watching the uh, chest for us. Watching it for Moo. There's no one else in this in this uh, camp. That's the word. I'll move towards the chest. Okay. Uh, roll me a uh, uh, debt stair. What's it? Uh, slide a hand, hand check. Hand. Yeah, mm. slide a hand check. Eighteen. Is that using your proficiency with these tools? Yes. It's again. You get to this last tumbler, and it's like you can't quite get it. Oh, this bloody thing! Can I try again? Yep. That's better. 27. 27. There you go. As you remember earlier, this time you didn't quite, as you remember before, you almost broke your thieves tools. But this one, you remember, oh yeah, that's where, that's right, you almost broke it. And then you go and finally notch the other tumbler as the clock or lock goes. Ching. Ah, take that, you bloody. Get out of here. Open the chest. Well done. Is Vera still is was Vera looking or is she still looking for Mela? I'm with her. I'm just distractedly repeatedly looking over my shoulder for the uh Mela, but I will stay with Carrie because I'm worried. Alright. Uh Carrie, you open it up? Mm-hmm. Yep, uh you find this bronze in color, massive egg of some sort. Cool. Four. Mm hmm. Is that all? That's all that's in there. Well, what the bloody hell is this? You can make a survival check or a religion check. Ooh. Not religion, history. History. I'm sorry, history. Um. Can I'll I make help a history her? check. If you're looking at it, sure. Yep, I will take that advantage. Ooh. <laughs> Rolled a five and a six, so that's an eight or a nine. <laughs> You're not sure. Love it's this. just a massive uh, egg for some reason. Mila and I start moving towards the tent and gathering up Ziggy to come with us. Uh, Ziggy's on the other side, so Ziggy, what are you doing? Noticing that nobody's around you anymore. Uh, I'll go and see what everyone's up to. I'm kind of like, oh, I, are we? It, did we leave already? And I'll kind of like hurry around the uh, the side. But hey, wait, wait, don't 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 leave without me. Uh, as you turn around and look, you see probably Mela and Dashin walking back towards the tent. And uh, Vera, if you're still looking around, you eventually see them kind of coming back from like the caged area. I will wave them over. Is the egg heavy? Or rather, how heavy is the egg? Yeah, I say good. Fifteen, maybe twenty pounds. So it's like that big, or uh, it's a uh, roughly big, bigger than. Could it fit in the big. bag of holding? <laughs> oh, it yeah, would be able to fit. Yeah, it definitely would. Hmm. Maybe. Actually, maybe. It definitely would, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Well, uh, we got big bloody egg and nothing else. That's, um, I mean, we saved people, right? We, there's prisoners that we saved. That's good. And I'll start exiting the tent with this big ass egg just in my tiny three foot hands. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Carrie, uh, 
Can I find a sword on the ground anywhere from any of these bodies? Yeah. Doesn't have to be special, just a sword. It is. It's a regular sword. Long sword. Thank you. No, carry it over to where I see my land, Destian. And Ziggy, coming around. Oi, look! About, be about around where the uh, campfire is. Found a big bloody egg and that's it. Uh, yeah, when when uh, Ziggy comes around, his eyes get real big and he gets real excited. He's like, guys, I think I know what this is. And he runs over to the egg. He's got like some scrolls out. He's referencing. He's uh, taking, he's got a little tape measure. Uh, he's taping, uh, you know, measuring out the egg and stuff. Uh, he's got like a little magnifying glass thing that's taking chromatic readings off the off the side of the thing, like a little like kaleidoscope looking thing. Um, can I make like a, a some sort of like informed history check on this? Yeah, you can do it with advantage. Oh, only if I figure out how to press that button. <laughs> uh, right click it. Nope. And hit advantage. Okay. We'll just roll twice. All right, I'll roll again. Let's see. I prefer you hit the advantage. <laughs> I got I, I I prefer that too. Um, I got nineteen as the the high roll there. Yeah, yeah, you definitely remember reading about these in your studies. This is a bronze dragging egg. Like an actual, not, not a dragon L. I know that. No, it's a bronze dragging egg. Uh, he starts uh, like getting real excited, hyperventilating. Guys, uh, do, you, you you don't understand what this is, so. We we haven't even seen real dragons, right? This 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 right here, what we have in our hands, is an actual dragon, not Dragonel, not Draconic Warrior or anything. This that we have found an actual um, dragon egg, I believe, of the bronze uh, uh, bronze variety, which I believe is uh, you Can know. You roll me uh, a perception metallic... check for uh, Stardust, please. Uh, like a passive perception check or you, you say it was a keeping lookout give me a perception yeah um let me take a moment and look what that perception would be for him because he doesn't have like a, like a button for a perception check uh be intelligence modifier wisdom um wisdom. yeah the deck decks and wisdom i can easily roll uh, how about we'll do a wisdom? Boom. Boom. Ten. <laughs> you hear in the air a dragon roar as it comes closer. As it comes closer, I'm running the fuck away. <laughs> this is what Stardust is seeing. As this oh God. massive black dragon lands on the top of the tower. A black dragon, not a bronze dragon? A black dragon. Okay. As it screams. And Stardust is... I need everybody to roll me... Uh, that a wisdom saving throw is this against it's a fear for effect? fear huh is this is against for a fear, fear effect yes cool critical fail <gasps> wisdom you said mm -hmm. and if it's a saving throw whoever's next to me also gets a plus five if you have not uh, all actually you guys, I'm not yet, so I need everybody to roll with disadvantage. Because you're not. So flat roll for. Yeah, for the kinders. Flat roll for the kinders? Yeah. So, because this is the first time you have encountered any kind of dragons. Full I choose dragons. to succeed. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Kinders can do that. <laughs> so it would not just roll. So I don't uh, know which one. DC would be 16. Um. Can I use an inspiration to re-roll? You can. Um, I, again, everyone would be having a plus five to this anyway, thanks to my aura. Okay. 
Um, I'd like to use my one inspiration here on my character sheet to re-roll. Uh, but it's still going to be a disadvantage, right? Yeah. See how we do here. It's gotta be better than Belron could take it. You can too. <laughs> Eleven. Eleven. Plus five. Oh, uh fifteen. 16. All right. Flapping wings sound above as a hulking creature with black scales descend. The roaring lands on top of the watchtower. Uh who all seceded? Just a kinder, I'm assuming. I did not succeed it. I got 16. Yeah, you should see Ziggy. Jash and what? What'd you get? With disadvantage, I got a natural one. Nice. Uh, I almost want to have you roll a constitution check to see if you pee your pants. (laughs) That one. That's that's why I wanted to (laughs) re-roll. I love it. Miss your goal. Miss your goal. I'm going to do better. I'm going to be brave. Fuck! I mean, it was a joke. You didn't, concept, you, didn't but... have, you didn't have to do that. That was more of a joke. But he will say, like, what in the hell is that? As she descends. So everybody's saved, right? So you're immune for the next 24 hours, except for Dashin. Dashin is scared. Uh, technically, at the end of your saving throws, you have to keep trying to save at the end of your turns. But right now, for this moment in time, we're not in combat but you do hear in your minds. Ah, yes. I see you of killing. The people do are supposed to deliver that egg to me. Please turn that over and leave with your lives. Carrie's still holding the egg. <laughs> she shoves it in the bag of holding and starts running for the tower to Bellroom's body. As you try to shove it in the bag of holding, Rataru's like, ah, 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 nope, Traitor! I nope, nope. Like, tuck it under my arm like a football <laughs> and fucking sprint. I'm going to mentally tell Hydrin to head for Bellroom's body as well. Guys who can't let can't let this dragon take <laughs> take this egg. The the bronze eggs, those are the I think these are I think from what I've read, these are the good guys. The black dragons are not 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 uh, nice. Uh Carrie, you running? Are you dashing? I'm running towards yeah, towards um the gate. Bellroom's body. What's its speed? Yeah, I think we all better run. Uh, <laughs> and I will continue I will are run. Are you all running with well. Carrie? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Imagine Das Chen is not. <laughs> Yeah, Dash, you can't run towards it because you're frightened. Dash, and now's the time for cowardice. Let's go. As you start to run, I need um, everybody to roll me a debt sturdy saving throw. Plus five to those around me. I don't know how far Kiri got ahead of me. I'm using boots of speed, so probably a bit. Probably too far. Well, this as soon as you tucked it and started running. <laughs> All right, who got what? I got a 20. I mean, I guess I got a 13 if we're using that plus 5. I got a 10. I think I'm, I think I'm out of range for the plus 5, so uh, six, 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 16. 17. All right. Um, we all melt. Only mm-hmm. one that saved was Dash and Ziggy. What'd you get? Uh, well, I got a 13, but that it was a natural one. Oh. But it got modified up to 13. It don't matter. Uh, everybody okay. everybody failed except for Dashin, so Dashin, you take half damage. The total damage I is... I have evasion. 48 points of acid damage. half damage? No, that's full damage. Half damage okay. is 24. I'm down. I'm down. I'm down. Uh, Dashin, you're... I, s- are you still up? I'm going to... Yes, I am up. All right. Give me another uh, wisdom saving throw. Uh, Carrie, not as, twenty. Not twenty. Nice. You're no longer frightened. 
But as you come to, is everybody down? Ziggy, well, you're down. I, I want to, I want to, I have, I can use my reaction to cast absorb elements, which I just looked up includes acid, All right. uh, which makes, means I am resistant to acid, which I, I'm it'll not sure 20, what that is. It'd be 24 points of damage then. Okay. Because yeah. uh, you would have took full damage, launch. you would took full damage, but you would took half. 24. Okay. I might be able to, I think I might be able to launch an acid attack next turn. I'm uh, just reading it now. Carry. Yes. So let's see. Carry's down. Let's say Carry probably got about right here. Down. Down. Uh, the egg was under my arm, so it'll. Yep. <sighs> she slits at the two still up. I. Right to Well, it's also a magical egg, so I, I was kind of, for plot purposes, technically you wouldn't have a bag on you. Just for plot purposes, he was not accepting it because it is a magical egg. Um, and he does have some level of sense of what's good and evil. <laughs> so, uh, call him a traitor all you want, but for story purposes, don't hold it against him, I guess. Uh, she looks at uh, the two of you and says... You behave you it's to stand down and let me take the egg, you insignificant beings that do not deserve the right to be in my presence. She swoops down. As she lands on the ground, yep. uh, dashed in back steps a few times a little bit towards Ziggy's location. Um, oh, no, you'd be back stepping towards her. So. Well, he's, he's stepping away from, from her, but just, I guess I can't see where Ziggy is. Oh. Help. Yes. <clears throat> Oh, so Ziggy and I are the closest ones there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Ziggy, what do we do here? And she starts to scoop up the egg that was dropped on the ground. Uh, well, we should try to save the egg. I, uh, I mean, I, I've only read about these guys, man. I, I don't know if they have like a like a like a chink in their and armor or something we away. can look for. <laughs> but. Uh, uh, I think and we should try to prevent. Go grab the egg. All right. At this point, I need everybody roll initiative because now you're going to try to do stuff. Take Carrie as a snack. Take Carrie as a snack. Uh, Jugan Hydran is still up and will be up until he is knocked at zero hit points himself. But I did tell him to go to uh, Bellworm's body. I didn't give him any other orders. Yeah. All right. Just uh, FYI. What's his movement speed? It's uh, 50. Did you tell uh, him to bring the uh, Kenna? I did not. Uh, okay. So he's just gonna I know she him. was admiring him, but I don't know what she would have been doing. He has enough movement to get there, I'm assuming. So I'll just put Hydrant over there. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's see. I got Gary at 24. Helpful when I'm face down and bleeding out. There's more for our rolls. There it is. Alright. Mirror, you got a what? 12. 12. I thought maybe y'all just dropped the thing and it's being hurt already. Mela, you got a 11. Dashing, you got a what? A 20, a 16 plus 4. And Ziggy, you got a what? I got a 24. It was a natural 20. Got it. And Kira, you got a 24 also. Uh, ready. I'm 
Alrighty. Alrighty. Uh, start to stain thing. Alrighty. Carry your be at the top. Well, uh, Dash, or sorry, Ziggy, you, since you got a natural 20, you do get a surprise round. Okay. Technically, you get an extra round as it's coming down to pick up the egg. Uh, I think Ziggy's realizing some of his book knowledge is not paying off in terms of like fighting an actual dragon. However, he has read about how tough and wily, intelligent, sometimes magical dragons are, and he's realizing that we might be a little in over our heads. Um, he's going to just uh, kind of in a fearful backpedal, uh, backpedal away from the dragon, and I'm going to try to shoot uh, a healing arrow at each as many people as I can. How many you got left charges? Um, I believe I've got several back? charges. I've only used one. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to move uh, back behind everybody. And I'm going to shoot yellow and red. Uh, shoot thing, yellow and red there. You want to go further? Um, no, I think that's good enough. Okay. And I'll, I'll just quickly shoot yellow and red there with um, uh, healing arrows. Okay. So, I, do, I mean, do I roll with advantage because they're prone and right in front of me? or It's actually disadvantage because they're prone. <laughs> well, all right. Advantage but, with a melee weapon. But let me. What does your uh, item say here? Let's see. The specific. I think. I think you choose your reaction to actually shoot them instead. Mm -hmm. uh, where is it? Come on. You think by now we know you know how the fucking arrow the bow and arrow works here? Let's see. Uh, all right. It automatically hits one creature I can see within 150 feet. Yeah, I think you spend charges to do so. Eight yeah. charges. Uh, the bow regains. That's for longbows. You take that. Attack action using the bow. You can spend one charge to place one of your attacks with a blazing. So basically, you just turn one of your attacks into an arrow, and you automatically hit a creature you see with 150 feet of you. Yeah, I can, and yeah. I'll spend two charges to do so. And uh, so Mela and Vera, you can spend a um, hit die. Plus three. Yeah. Plus your yeah your wisdom modifier so plus three so it's been a hit die plus three. Sorry, what's a hit die again? So your hit die, uh, Mela, I think what is yours a D eight? I think I think clerics are D eights. Okay, so D eight plus plus three. That doesn't really say on the sheet. Uh, hit die is for classes like you roll your hit die. Oh yeah, I know. I just it, there's nowhere on the sheet where it makes that obvious that I can see. Yeah, so like when you level up, that's when you I, when I say you have max health, you roll that hit die. So if you have a d12, you have a 12. You roll a hit eight. If you have d8, you have a eight per add on to your constitution. All right. Uh, so, uh, so what? Did Carrie get? Oh, no, I mean, sorry, Vera. Vera, what'd you get? Uh, it's, it's a six total with uh, plus three. Yeah. It was yeah. a three. Yeah. <laughs> Mela, what'd you get? Nine total. Nine total. So you both come back. I need Constitution saving throws from both of you. And this is you don't get the aura from this. 23. 23. 14. 14. Mela, you've been down so many times, you actually take a level of exhaustion. Because every time you go down, it increases. Alright. Alright, uh, Ziggy, that was your first action. Your second action? Oh, so we're at the top of the round and I have the high initiative. Oh, no, no, um, you don't. You're right. That was your uh, surprise round. Sorry. Uh, oh, well, yeah. That was a surprise shot round. both of them. 
Yeah, it's so, top of, yeah, so now yeah. it's, them. So yeah. carry your top of the round, but you're down, so I gotta roll your death saves. Also, I would have technically had a surprise round too, because I rolled an at twenty. But you're unconscious. So yeah. You're gonna have a surprise round if you're unconscious. Yeah, oh, yeah. Sure Just saying. Oh wait, so that would tend to count for both your death saves. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. That's confident. Kill me, kill me, kill me. <laughs> All right. Okay. We'll do that, please. No. Mike throws down. Ziggy, you're up. Mm. Uh, so we could all just come back next week with alternate characters. Or we just call the end of the campaign here. <laughs> <laughs> the dragons please, please. won. No. 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 <laughs> the dragon no. army won. All right, Ziggy, what are you doing? Um. Well, I, I have one more friend down, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to definitely shoot them with a curative arrow. Oh, I roll that, don't I? Yep. Yeah. Yep. And... Get die and add a plus three. Yeah. Six. All right, you come back to life with Three hit points left. Give me a dexterity or constitution saving throw. Oh, nat 20 it, again. Nice. You, even though you've been not down before, you're able to <sighs> come back <sighs> up as you see the dragon above you scooping up the egg. That's oh, shit. That's skidded across. It's still Ziggy's turn, right? Yeah, you um, still yeah. have one more shot, right? You shoot yeah, I'm her. gonna. Uh, yeah, I'm going. I'm, I'm gonna yell. Look, Carrie, just stay down, stay away from it. Uh, we might have to just let it take the egg, uh, and then I'll fire an extra. Uh, I'll fire an extra cure arrow um, at uh, Carrie. Sure, I'll take that. Uh, nine. You get nine more hit points. All right. Uh, you stay in there, Ziggy, or you keep moving back? Uh, I'll hold position. All right. Dashton, you're up. It's my turn. Huh? My turn. Oh, you were at the top of the round. You were before oh. Ziggy. Oh, that's right. Yep, 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 yep. Ignore me. Yeah, Dashton, you're up. Yeah, I had two saves um. for you, by the way, so you were far from dying. <laughs> Unless it bit your head off or something. <laughs> Where where's the egg at currently? It's in the palm of the dragon as it's scooping can it I, up. Can I use my reaction to try and grab the egg if it's within range? Technically it's not because you're very short. Okay. Damn. Damn. <laughs> you really want to die, don't you? <laughs> Ziggy said it was a good egg. Uh -huh. I can't let the good egg get taken by bad guys. Yeah, but uh, I, I feel it's the expense of all of us. Yeah. Um, I, I'm going to attempt to deceive the dragon um, and cast Minor Illusion in the form of an identical egg uh, in my hand to say, uh, say, hey, big scales, looking for this one. All right, uh, roll me... Oh, no, actually, what's the DC for it? It's a DC for it. Uh, 16. Uh, well, I mean, what's the save? Oh, sorry. Um, I think it's wisdom. I'm 90% sure. Investi intelligence or investigation. It's in no, 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 like your save. Is it like strength, con, intelligence, wisdom? Intelligence. 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 Okay. Yeah. It just in parentheses it says intelligence investigation check. But um, intelligence. It's gonna lose you legendary resistance to withstand that. And look at you. She says Cheap politics did not deceive what I actually hold in my hand, you bumbling idiot. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah, he uh, he he qualms a little bit at at failing, and uh, 
everybody is standing up, so uh, he's going to bonus action. Is it bonus action to give someone a potion? Uh, or is that an you're... action? It's a bonus action to give, yes. Okay, I will give the a potion of greater healing to uh, to Mila and then retreat over to, well, I'm already right next to her, so. Yeah. You gonna move anywhere or stay there? Uh, I will stay quiveringly in between the dragon and Mila. Uh, Garner's in chat and he says use a short rest to bring, if you click on a short rest once, it tells you what your hit dice are. That's a quick, quick yep. design. Thank you, Garner, for pointing that out. All right, it's Hatan, and she looks at you. You puny imbeciles are not worth my time. The dragon army would deal with you. And she <laughs> takes off and flies away. Oh, actually, let me see on her way out. She just gets her ass or breath back. She does not. On her way out, she sees Stardust. She's gonna make a bite at Stardust. I'm assuming a uh, 27 hits. Yes. Do you have any resistance? Does, does Stardust have any resistance to acid? Uh, just lightning, no. Okay, cool. Um, so that is... So 20 points total of damage from the bite. Mm -hmm. Is Stardust still up? Yes. Barely. That was half its and points. The other claw that's not holding the egg is going to make an attack. Okay. I'm assuming a natural 20 hits. Well, yes, it does. Can have a intimidate or a puny replica of a dragon around. I hate to remind you again, but you had to hurt them hard. Did you <laughs> use that with that acid breath on us? Because it's not it's not a direct attack it's a save on you guys if that makes sense okay okay so i should have <laughs> so that should have been double damage on the on the, on the on, bite on yeah so stardust was, yeah i'm and, just worried it's like are we actually all dead right now if that hurt them hard that 49 doubled or yeah. 48 or whatever that was I oh yeah that would be tragic so that dead. would be 11 <laughs> more points of damage on stardust from the bite um 11 more from just the bite the first yeah. attack yeah okay and then you're gonna do a claw attack still yeah oh yeah all right okay that one up that was oh the claw uh, attack is what you yeah, rolled 20. a 20 on yeah uh 26 okay. on the claw attack yeah with with that in a burst of lightning stardust vanishes See Sardos vanish, flies away, flapping. Just a dick move on your way out, huh? Yeah, she could have a, a poorly reputation of a dragon around. I, it totally makes sense. It's a great... Uh, I like the, the idea of her just nonchalantly just chomping it out of existence as yeah. it's flying off. It, it, <clears throat> uh, uh, you hear puny dragon and it just flies off <laughs> but you're all left to what's left around you what do you bloody hell I nearly broke my pick for that bloody egg Um, quick question. Did Dashin give 
Like, did, she, did he pour it or just give it to me? Like, give it to you. Him. Just give it to you. It's in your okay. hand. I'll get up and keep heading over to Bellroom's body. Yeah, and as you can see, uh, what is your hydrant? Hydrant. It's kind of trying to lift Bellroom with its nose and head, and it's not able to do so. I'm going to get up and head that way, too. I mean, y'all can easily, we don't need the map anymore for it, so. I'd love to help you, very tall creature, but I am not strong. Keep going. Uh, ah, I got it, I got it, Carrie. I am going to help with Belrum on the hydrogen. And I still have... I still have rope left, don't I? I do. The only thing I lost last time was my grappling hook. I'm going to tie him down, the hydrogen. Uh, it's a All good. right. We 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 need to go before um anything else hits us. Okay. I agree. Yeah. Oh my god! What was that? Is that the dragon? It was a real live dragon. How are you still standing? What did it eat us? What was it after? Egg. Uh, it yeah, it just, it took a dragon egg and almost murdered us and flew away. I think we're just lucky to be alive, right? Yes, yeah, let's get the hell out of here. That... Sounds good. Let's go. Yeah. I'll quickly take the, the potion. Was it a greater? Yeah, greater it was greater. Potion? All right, yeah, I'll quickly do that real quick. All right, as you scamp away in the night, heading to God's knows where. Mm. We have a few more minutes if you'd like to find a place to hide, because it is in the middle of the night. If you keep going, you'll probably start taking levels of the jaw soon. You'll probably get out a couple miles away probably and if you would like what do you want guys to maybe maybe if we found some like caves or or a, well, some terrain to hide in we could set up our tents and not and, down in and, the canyons though yeah we could set up our tents and, and get some rest or uh we could just march we could march through the the night and get as far away from this place as possible Personally, I vote that we could probably reasonably come up with a relatively secure and, and, and uh, you know, four or five miles away, a relatively secure hiding area. Uh, uh, maybe scout out uh, some sort of position where we could set up tents under cover or something like that so that we can at least rest for the for the hard, hard journey ahead. Or, uh, yeah, or uh, I guess we could just march through the night. Second that, though, remember, uh, the wash is down at the moment. If we go into caves, it could flood. If we find any caves, at left. Okay, well, let's stay on... Is it, There's no such thing as a tree line, right? We're still, like, in the wasteland We stay on high stuff. ground. Stay on high ground. And when we find a suitable place to camp... Um, Ziggy, you do survival stuff. You can right. chuck rocks and sand and dirt and stuff on it and try and make it look a bit maybe camouflage that's exactly what i was thinking is uh yeah uh, use all my uh skills to scout out an, an ideal place where we can rest for the night and yeah do some uh some camouflage uh some like stealth maybe like you know we're finding like just under under rocks and stuff up up, up on the high ground but there's like some boulders or whatever we can put the tents in some sort of lean to behind the boulder so, it, you know, it's not real noticeable, that kind of stuff. And, I uh, yeah, I'll recruit my friends to help me. Let's do it. So if I get help, I get an advantage on my survival roll, right? Um, just roll a survival check. A flatter advantage. 
Is somebody helping you? That's proficient. Yeah, we're all helping. That, that's yeah. proficient yeah. in survival. Ooh. Nope. I am proficient in survival and will help. All right. There you go. I'm also proficient. <laughs> Excellent. You guys are uh, great teammates. Help me set this stuff up. Uh, all right. Rolling with advantage. Go team. You can do it. Moral support. Oh my God. Yay. <laughs> uh, 17 is the best we could do with that. Nice. Is Vera's it's plus five ones. still on? It's for saves, not for checks. Oh, Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. So 17, best I can do. You find a little bit of high ground with some natural rock formations that maybe you can at least cover like fortify like half of your little camp that you set up. And um, I think we'd be good to call it there. Um, and then y'all can do a little bit more unless uh, actually unless very you're going to open up your letter or read it tonight. I would if I had a moment alone to do that. All right, Garrison. Maybe during. Huh? I was just going to say maybe during the watch, because I believe we also have a letter that was addressed to both Carrie and Mila. Yeah, that was the notebook. We've read that. Oh, yeah, they okay. they read that one, yeah. yeah they read that Sorry. One, yeah. We read four or five. I just didn't remember yeah. if that one got that. The only one that's not been read is Vera's and Laura Wins. That's right. Okay. I don't think y'all are ever going to read lower ones, probably. I don't think so. Okay, oh, Garris, my dash like... sneak in and read it. Yeah, Garrus, would you like to come back and uh, read Avir's Lair? If you're still in chat. I think you should be. Sounded like he was. Should we decide who's on watch with each other? Then? Well, let's let Vera go first, though, so... She can read her letter. Oh. As long as I still have eyes of night on. <laughs> right. I don't know. I think it only lasts like an hour. There so I... Sweet. Oh, I'll get a torch. I'm here. Yeah, just an hour. All right. Uh, are we intending short resting or long resting? Because if short resting, I would like to use um, uh, what's it called here? Prayer of healing. No. Song of rest. Song of rest. Song of rest. Oh, song. But if we're long resting, well then. I think the plan was a night's sleep, so I think that's a long yeah, rest. Yeah, you're in the middle of the night. You're going to have to pretty much take a long rest when you start taking little exhaustions. But uh, we'll end on the letter for Vera, and then uh, y'all can pick up. We'll say Vera has the first watch or something, or she kind of, as y'all, actually, we'll do this. As y'all setting up camp, Vera kind of walks over to herself to read the letter. And then when we come back, we can start with you guys starting your long rest and setting up watches and all that good stuff. Explains why the survival check wasn't that great if she's off reading a letter rather than helping us. I mean, I'm I'm saying y'all found a spot and y'all no, setting you're, up. Camp. You're fine. Being silly. Jesus. All right. Uh, Vera and Bellroom. You tell me when you're ready. I'm ready. I don't know if I am. <clears throat> but here we go. Vera, if you're reading this, then I've taken my final steps towards the stars in our world, leaving behind words that I hope can capture even a fraction of what you've meant to me, to us. In the time that I've known you, your faith has been a beacon, guiding us through the storms I once thought insurmountable. Your unwavering belief has not just changed the tide of our battles, it has changed the essence of who I am. Your devotion, Vera, is a testament to the power and belief and the unshakable spirit it kindles within. The way you wield your faith as both shield and weapon, defending the innocent and striking down darkness has inspired me to stand taller, fight harder, and be a better dwarf. Your conviction in the face of adversity reminds us all that we are never truly alone as long as we carry the light of our deities within our hearts. 
the strength you draw from your faith, the grace with which you navigate the trials before us has been a source of admiration for me. In every challenge, you find a way to shine brighter. You resolve as steadfast as the mountains from which I hail. You've been our compass, Vera, in more ways than you can ever imagine. Your presence has been a testament to the power of faith, not just in the deities you hold dear, but in us, in our case, in our bond as a family. You have shown us all what it means to stand firm in one's beliefs, to walk a path lit by the divine, even when shrouded in doubt and fear, to be a family. As I face what must be my last sunrise, I am compelled to express my gratitude for the lessons you've unknowingly imparted upon me. The essence of true strength, the depth of faith, and the courage to stand firm in one's beliefs. These are the gifts that you've shared, not through words, but through the valor of your actions. Know that your journey, your faith, has left an indelible mark in my soul. I venture into the unknown with a heart fortified by the memory of you whose strength and faith knows no bounds. I will see you enter the halls of Valhalla and proudly proclaim your deeds to those who preceded you into the hall. May your path be ever lit by the divine. May your shield never falter. You are the beacon for us all, Vera, a reminder of the light that endures even in the deepest darkness. Bellroom. Vera, as you read this letter, you look up in the dark blue skies. Only which you can see is the clouds rolled back in the halls of the outside of the Hall of Valhalla. You see a ghost looking of Belrum. He turns back to you and holds up an axe and turns back and walks to the hall. With that, you have peace. And with that, we'll call a close to tonight's episode. God. <sighs> Love this game. I would like to personally thank each and every one of you to make this episode probably the best session I've ever had in this game. I'd like to thank Garrus for the words you have written and the emotions from the song that uh, Malice shit did from the top. It started out, set the tone for the whole episode. I know it's not much, but everybody can have one of every reward that you can get redeemed on the channel. If you don't have inspiration, you get one inspiration. You get a D6, a D20, a reroll. It's not much I can do other than that. And to tell you, I love y'all very much. This, I don't know what else, no words can describe for like how I feel in this moment, so. Other than that, I'll turn it over to a lighter tone. Uh, Knowledge, when will you be live again tomorrow? Is that correct? Yes. Uh, tomorrow, tomorrow I will be live. Um, uh, going through uh, playing Honkai Star Rail again. I'm in Benaconi trying to uh, summon the newest hero, uh, Sparkle. Um, uh, <laughs> Cleanser Ring. Uh, probably won't be live in the next seven days or before the next session, but um, but yeah, I do uh, I do appreciate the opportunity to make a shout out, but I have none to give. And Garrus, I'll be on at some point. With that being said, if you're watching on YouTube, please like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. 
Um, this video definitely deserves every bit that you can give. Um, this kind of goes out for anybody that's lost anybody in their lives recently or who's dear to them. We think about you and pray if that's your thing or what have you. Hope you find peace and comfort in this episode and know that we all love you and you guys have a wonderful night. Have a good night, guys. I can feel it burn, burn, burn.